Hey, John, how's your day been? How's the wife? How's the kids? I've been working on this new type of ale. I've... You know what, John? Fuck. So I had the idea to make a tavern management game, where the gameplay loop revolves around the customers ordering food. You then serve them that order, and they pay for their food. Then with the money generated, you spend that on upgrades to the tavern. And this is going to be a cyclical gameplay loop that repeats every single night. In my previous video, I worked on uh, implementing a multiplayer game, and I think that this tavern management game would work super well in that context. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to add was some first person controls. So you can look up and down, you can look left and right, and you can also use the WASDA keys on your keyboard to walk around. Next thing I wanted to do was add interactables that the player can pick up and move around. So I added this little mug that he can pick up and then fill with either cheap or good ale. So here I am, <laughs> yeah, just pretend, just pretend. So I can fill up the mug with the ale and then turn around and place it on the table for the customers. Now you see a nice little preview that I set up so that you know where you're going to place it. So here now the customer can walk in, it can order something such as cheap ale, and it will require you to pick up your mug, fill it, and then place it down. And he's pretty happy. I set up a state machine for a customer, but the code for that's pretty boring, so I'm going to explain it from a higher level. Now the customer state machine updates every single frame. Depending on conditions, it'll either continue in its state or switch to a new one. So it'll move until it meets its destination, then it'll switch to order. So based on these conditions, it can switch back and forth from its order state to its sit state to its leave state. Next, I wanted to set up how to determine what customers should order and how that would be represented in the tavern. So I set up an order manager with a list of ingredients that are available. From these available ingredients, there will be a list of possible recipes that the customer will request from. So as you add ingredients over time, it increases in complexity. I redid the body of our main player character because when you look up and down, you can see into his torso. It's a little weird. So I hopped into Blender for that. Then, you know, Jeffrey Dahmered him up. And after switching back to Unity, you can see now he's just a pair of arms. Next, I wanted to update the hands to use inverse kinematics, which, you know, admittedly really doesn't matter because I didn't get it to work. I needed a way for the customer to validate that what you're serving him is what he ordered. So I set up this little check order function and based on whether or not it's correct, the uh, customer will react appropriately. So now that the customer can actually validate its own order, uh, I set up a function to spawn more customers after they are served and the customers actually take a seat too. At this point, I think the bean had gotten a little old, so we got an upgrade. <laughs> Yeah, okay, it's the same thing that I was using for the player, but it looks much nicer than a bean. I also added humanoid animation, so when you place down the mug, he'll go pick it up, it sits in his hand, and he can go walk over and sit down. Yeah. Yeah, it's sitting down, bud. That's uh, sitting down. I also added some food, so our tavern serves more than just ale. I got a nice little porridge station with a rack of bowls, and you can grab a bowl and scoop yourself some delicious porridge and let me see what the customers think of it okay man i don't think it's that bad but fine i'm just gonna go sit in my station myself i then spent some time working on a very important drunk effect because hey you know if you're pouring beers why can't, why why can't why 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 can't why can't you just be slamming slamming them your you why can't, Anyways, back to some more important upgrades is I added this very nice little outline shader. It really makes the assets pop, especially looking at the mugs and bowls. I know right now the backgrounds are white, so maybe it's not showing up as nicely. But once we get them in a proper environment with a dark background, you can see it here on the porridge station. When you look at an item, that outline will pop up, and it, I really like it. Speaking of using actual proper assets, I'm going to use Sinti's Fantasy Pack for the rest of this series. Now this is just a gorgeous asset pack that includes tons of buildings, people, props, uh, anything that you need for a very stylized, low poly, medieval sort of setting. And I'm really loving how it looks, and I hope you will too. So I bought it on the Unity Asset Store, it's on sale for 50% off pretty often. Also in regards to how I want the tavern to look, I found this really nice photo by Francis Chofsky that I'm going to use as a reference now. 
montage time. And here we are with the completed tavern for now. Still a lot of little things we can add, you know, a little bit more decorations, but for starters, I think this looks incredible. And here's what the finished product looks like from back behind the bar. I really like it. It's a really warm, sort of homely feeling. Pretty happy with how it turned out. You can also flick on some post-processing and the outlines definitely pop a lot more now. And no, I still haven't fixed that, don't ask me. Even though the general gameplay loop is the same, it looks so much nicer now. Speaking of those Cinti assets, I added new skins for the customer, so... Which is a nice upgrade for our buddy here. Also, customers will now actually pay for their food, which is nice. Nice. No freeloading scum allowed. Also, the skins for the customers are randomly selected. So as you can see, there's a few different ones happening here. It just cycles through a list. Finally, one last thing I needed to add was the ability to drop items. And if you can drop them, might as well be able to throw them. I definitely am not having way too much fun filling up a can of beer and yeeting it across the tavern. Definitely not having too much fun. Definitely don't love the way it looks. Anyway, I went through and added a few more ingredients uh, to fill out our cooking system a little bit more. I added some bread, sugar, and cheese. I'm not 100% sure with how we want to do the baking. I, I really enjoyed Breath of the Wild's sort of experimentation style of letting players learn, but I, I think that'll have to happen in the next episode. Anyway, it's probably time to get going here, but I'm really happy with what we've accomplished so far in these first few little bits. Uh, I've got endless ideas of what to add going forward. Obviously, I want to integrate multiplayer. I think that would kind of be the backbone of this whole system. There's a lot of fun gameplay aspects that you can add just, you know, in the spirit of goofing off with your friends, like uh, doing chores, chasing out goblins, stuff like that. I was throwing around tons of ideas with one of my buddies the other night. Uh, speaking of which, I actually have a Discord. Uh, the link for that is down below if you want to join... I'm definitely going to turn this into a series because I'm really liking how it's going and I, I like the feel of it. But seriously, swing by. Um, I'm still hashing out a lot of ideas, so any input you bring, I'm definitely consider. And as you can see, I'm brand new starting out here on YouTube, so look, a like or a sub would be huge for me and very impactful. Anyways, I think I will catch you guys in the next episode of the series just to see how far this goes. So look, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and be seeing you in the next one.